So our next speaker um, comes from Tel Aviv, and she's well connected in the Israeli kind of cyber underworld. She teaches at Singularity University. If you want to get to know the people behind Anonymous, she's probably a good place to start asking. This is going to be a bit of a live experiment. You'll see why in a minute. Please welcome Karen Elazari. <laughs> Let me just get my slides up for you. I'm going to try something different today. I'm going to try and show you something live. I'm going to try and bring home the points you've just heard about. As you heard, my name is Karen Elazari. You can find me on Twitter as Karen E. All E's are spelled with threes. And I'm going to talk to you about mobile device security and the power of data, which is in our pockets. So, as you heard, I was born and raised in Tel Aviv, Israel, about 30 years ago. I've spent more than half my life working and being a part of the Israeli information security and hacking scene with both security technology companies and other organizations. More recently, I've worked with Singularity University as one of their teaching fellows, looking at how technology affects the future of humanity, and specifically how that relates to security. Now, right now, I'm going to really talk to you about mobile device security, and that's what I'm focused on. And I'm working with a couple of very interesting technology companies back in Israel that are focusing on the next generation of, of threats and how to stop them. So, I'd like to welcome you to the cyber age. We already live in an era where technology is all around us. In fact, not, not just on this planet, we've got autonomous robots roving Mars and they're tweeting about it and telling us what's, what they're finding there. Not only that, some of us have technologies embedded into our bodies. We've got pacemakers, insulin regulation pumps, and we're gonna see more of that even today with some bionic technologies. So information, data is already living within, within us. It's not just in computer networks. It's not even uh, just on this planet. And with the concepts of 3D printing, bringing alive the possibilities of taking digital information, binary plans, and fabricating physical objects out of them, we really are blurring the boundaries between the physical realm and the digital realm. So uh, thankfully, you've already heard from Miko about Stuxnet, so I don't have to tell you that I didn't write it. However, I do think that uh, Stuxnet definitely took us into the next frontier and the lines between physical war and cyber war has definitely been crossed. We're in a different era right now. And in any form of future conflict, we'll definitely see cyber elements playing into it. In fact, cyber warfare has been already called the fifth domain of warfare. And with the American Department of Defense claiming that it is one of the most critical domains of warfare other than land, sea, air, and space. But it's not just a place for superpowers and covert operations. As you've heard, it's also a place where direct democracy takes place. It's also where the Arab Spring started. It's also where hacktivism, hacking and activism, is now really shaping the form of protests around the world, with hacker groups and like Anonymous, for example, really taking this new form of power of cyberspace into the streets, instigating riots, not just in digital space. So if we think about it, we really are in an era where data is all around us. It's collected about us. We're analyzing it. So information is power, at least we're being told. Today, I'd like to ask you something different. I think that without access to that information, we are, in, in fact, powerless. So it is, in fact, the access to information which holds the real power. Now, that's where hackers come into the picture. Because that's exactly what hackers know how to do. They know how to gain access to data, wherever it is, whatever it is, and they'll do whatever they'd like with it. So come to think about it, where is your data? Where is it being stored? Where is it being transmitted? Are you in control of your data? Let's look at where the world's data is going. And 
Only this year, there are more than 6 billion mobile users around the world. And many of them are using mobile data. In fact, mobile data subscribers are twice as many as fixed data subscribers around the world. But this is the real staggering uh, piece of information. Mobile data traffic in the last year was eight times the size of everything that passed on the global internet in the year 2000. So our information, our data, is definitely going on the mobiles. And each of us carries in our pockets a very clever device. A device, at least one, I've got five, which is, <laughs> yeah, which is capable of contacting networks, wireless, cellular, Bluetooth, it's location aware, it's got images, a mic and a camera, it holds all of our most personal conversations, it's got everything. Some mobile devices actually uh, hold our payment information on them. So it's no wonder these are the attacker's new wet dream. They're basically, it's a one-stop one shop to finding everything they want to know about you. But not just about you, also about the companies and the organizations you're a part of. With Bring Your Own Device, more and more organizations are enabling their employees to bring in smart devices and connect into their corporate networks. So these mobile devices are actually a gateway into a lot more than just your private data. But it's frightening to admit it that less than one in 20 mobile devices run any type of security software. I'm sure that each of you has got antivirus, firewall, you've got everything configured back in your home or office, but what about your mobile device? That's a new frontier. And now I'm going to show you quite quickly um, a couple of really live examples. So earlier today, I've set up a network here, and it's called Wired Demo Network. I'd like to invite you to join it, if you dare. It's uh, open, no password needed. And in a couple of moments, I'm gonna show you some things on that network. So I'm gonna let you have a second and click into that, if you like. It should be available right now. And the tools that I'm going to use in order to show you is actually one very simple tool. It's one smartphone. So everything you're about to see is going to happen from this device right here. Not from my laptop, not from the router. I don't need any James Bond type gear. I've got everything I need right here. So let me show you that. Can you see my screen? Perfect. Okay. Are you on? Are you ready? Let's go. So, oops, sorry. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you today is actually well, sniffing of the wireless network. When we're walking around the street, or if you sit in a cafe or here in a conference, the first thing you do is pull out your mobile, click into the Wi-Fi network, start surfing, checking an email, maybe tweeting about it. I do. Uh, but actually, what you're doing can be very, very visible easily to other people. Right now, I'm scanning the network using a tool called uh, Android Network Toolkit by a company called Zimperium back from Tel Aviv, and they made this demo possible today. As you can see, we've got a couple of devices on the network right here, and let's try and see what you guys are clicking into. So I'm opening up a very comfy little tool. It's all pre-configured into this tool set, not doing anything in the backstage. And I'm gonna see if we can see some links or Okay, somebody's going on to Dropbox. See if we can see some cookies, something else. Apple website, give it a few moments. I can have cheeseburger, nice, I like that website. That's where lolcats uh, started. Uh, okay, I want to pull up some of those images and show those to you, but maybe you, you don't want me to do that. What I can tell you, by the way, is that we've tried this earlier and yesterday, and I also found out an interesting fact that Instagram and Twitter applications on the mobile devices actually transmit everything in the clear. So yesterday evening, I was checking out some people's uh, Instagram feeds, Twitter feeds. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry about that. So the images are not working. But let's try something even um, more sophisticated than that. So for my next trick, I'd like to try and show you what is called the man in the middle attack. Now, a man in the middle attack basically means that there's somebody, a bad guy, in this case me, is on the network. 
and they're trying to hijack your network and take it somewhere else. So I've already prepared something called Wired Demo, and I'd like you guys who are surfing on the network to tell me if something ha funny happens. And I'm gonna try and show you on this uh, laptop that I'm using right here. Anything? Okay, so it's not uh, exact science and sometimes it doesn't work. I guess there's uh, many people on the network right now. So for the next part, I'm gonna show you something different. I'm going to show you uh, actually how I prepared for this presentation today. So I downloaded a little application called Stopwatch to see how long it takes me to speak. Now, I'm sure many of you use applications and you download them from stores, etc. right? Anyone here uses uh, apps? Have you downloaded an app this week, this month? Several applications? In fact, it's probable that you've downloaded more applications than you've installed new software on your PC, if you think about it. Now, something very interesting happened after I used this, um, this software for a while. And what happened is that actually, I clicked it and I tried to get it to run, and it wouldn't run. Instead, I got this black screen and a pretty, pretty freaky laugh. I don't know if you can see this guy here. Kind of spooky. So I was asking myself, what the hell is going on here? And you know, this application is probably not what I thought it is. And in fact, the reality is that more than 70% of uh, malware for the Android operating system is legitimate applications masquerading, uh, including in them actually malicious applications inside. So what happened here? I'm going to uh, check my mailbox, if you will, and see if I can find any clues. Uh, I guess the network's a little bit slow because of all of the stuff that I was doing there. So what I found out when I was playing around with it is that this uh, malicious application actually took a picture with the camera and it sent it to some mailbox somewhere. And it did that without use of my mailbox. It happened in the background. I'm gonna try and see if I can show that to you. Sorry about that. Aha, uh -huh, I see the problem. I've screwed up the wireless network so badly that it can't send the email. Anyway, uh, now that I've sufficiently terrified you, I want to give you a couple of tips, especially if you're publishing digital information, if you're creating applications, on how we can actually be safer. So when we are using unknown networks, when we are downloading applications, uh, basically, we're playing the Wheel of Fortune. Now, in this game, uh, let's get rid of this guy here. So we're playing the Wheel of Fortune, but in this game, to paraphrase Game of Thrones, you either win or you lose your data to some bad guys. So how can we be safer when using these technologies that can actually give us quite a lot? When you're downloading applications, how can you tell if the application actually does what it's supposed to do or it's transmitting your information over the network to some, someone that shouldn't be seeing it. Well, there's a couple of, couple of clues there, but you also need to remember that with great power comes great responsibility. This technology can do amazing things for us, but if we're publishing applications, if creating digital information, we also have to make sure that we maintain security when we're doing it. And uh, you have to stop and think before you connect, you have to stop and think before you install a new application. And especially when using public wireless and unknown apps, which people tend to do quite easily. Stop and think, would you do the same thing if this was your laptop? Probably not. Now, this device has much more information about you than your laptop nowadays. And you have to make the right choices. So using 3G is uh, always a better alternative. Using virtual private networks, which can be configured on mobile devices and using HTTPS, which is the secure form of HTTP browsing. But there's actually some security software for mobile devices available today, even from F-Secure and from other security vendors. And uh, um, I'd like to give a big shout out to Zimperium, the company from Tel Aviv, 
that actually developed the world's first intrusion prevention mechanism for mobile devices. And with this in mind, I'd like to really thank you uh, for participating. And uh, I hope that when you do surf out there, you don't have to encounter people like me trying to sift sniff out your network. So stay safe out there, and if you'd like to continue the conversation, you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, on my website. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.